I'm from Buenos Aires, and I said, kill them all. Come on, you apes, you want to live forever? You coming? Uh, nah, man, we're, we're good. Uh, where did you say you were from? Be, be, Bionio? Buenos Aires! Oh, uh, that's cool. We're from Pasadena, bro. Hey, what's up, Funkheads? The biggest Funko Pop release day of the year was today. San Diego Comic Con shared exclusive day. It's Funko's big day, it's the Super Bowl. And it's probably the day that most Funko collectors spend the most amount of money. I know for me it was. A couple hundred bucks at least. But I ended up with some pretty cool pieces. So the hunting started Wednesday night, 9 o'clock Pacific time, 12 o'clock East Coast time. And the first site I tried to hit up was GameStop. I was after that Johnny Rico. I was after that Kang and Kodos 2-pack. Especially the Kang and Kodos 2-pack. Because I knew it would sell out. It's right on the top of the list of most people's wants this year. And those two were the only ones I really wanted. But this year, GameStop's website took a total shit. It just got bum rushed by everybody right away, probably because of that two pack. And it was just very, very slow. If you managed to get them to your cart and somehow managed to put in your shipping information, your card information, then the site would kind of crash. I tried this for like an hour. After a while, GameStop put up on their site like the site was under maintenance or something like that. It would be back later. I tried later and King and Kodos was sold out. So it was a big swing and a miss on GameStop's website. Then after that, I went right for box lunch because I felt the up two pack with Carl and Ellie was also going to be one of the most popular ones. And it's one I really wanted. The site was a little bit slow, but it was really no big deal to get that two pack into the cart and check out. I made sure to be logged in before to not have to deal with all that. Any extra step you can save during SDCC saves you a lot of time. Carl and Ellie did sell out, not right away. If you really wanted it, you had enough time to get it. I want to say it lasted anywhere from like half an hour to 45 minutes. And I was glad I was able to get that one because last con day, the box lunch in my area was already like 30, 40 people deep an hour before it opened. And I really did not want to stand in that line. So very happy to be able to snag that one the night before. Then after that, shockingly, shockingly, Barnes and Noble's website actually worked at this time. I don't know if it's because the last like four years people have been burned by getting charged multiple time and their money being frozen up by Barnes and Noble, the site never working, or if it was just that the pops they got this time weren't that interesting to people. Because the only one I wanted was Bean in her muddy princess dress. And I don't think that was a very popular one. I mean, I think the only popular one that Barnes and Noble was going to get was the Rita Skeeter from Harry Potter. I can see people really wanting that one. But all the other ones I feel are going to be hanging around the shelves at the store for a while. So yeah, didn't have to go into Barnes and Noble. I even had a joke already, man. I was going to tell somebody to stop flicking their bean so they don't ruin their box. But I didn't even have the chance to use it. I left Hot Topic for last because I knew they would have the biggest stock. And I also knew that the most popular one was going to be that red chrome Vegeta. And it's just one I didn't want. So I left Hot Topic last. And I was able to get the Flocked Fox, which I think looks really amazing. I'm not a huge Harry Potter collector. I only collect the ones that are either the absolute best representation of a character or really stand out like this Fokker here. I also got the classic comic Gamora, which has a great color scheme. It's going to look great with my classic comic Rocket Raccoon and Star-Lord. I also threw Sabrina the Teenage Witch in the shopping cart. And I never read the comic this is based on. I only used to watch that show with Melissa Joan Hart with that sassy ass Salem. And I think there's a Netflix show, but I couldn't sit through that. But I really like the look of this pop. I think it's really cute. I love the cauldron it comes with. And I much prefer to have this comic book style of her than like from the TV show. And lastly from Hot Topic, the pop I wanted the most from this year's SDCC, Oscar Langley from Evangelion in her schoolgirl uniform. My absolute favorite pop from this year's SDCC, I can't imagine that Funko is only going to make Asuka in her schoolgirl uniform. I'm pretty sure that a plug suit Asuka is coming, plug suit and school uniform Shinji, plug suit and school uniform Rei, gotta have Misato, 
Got to have a fan service Masato. Got to have all the Abas and six inches or 10 inches. I just can't imagine it only being Asuka. Really looking forward to the Evangelion line. I feel like this Asuka might be a sleeper in the same way that Steve from Stranger Things was. When his STCC exclusive came out, it was one of the last ones to sell off of the website. I remember it being on the website for like a week. It was in stores for a good while. If you wanted to buy him on eBay, I want to say for the next like two, three months, people were only asking for like 20 bucks, 24 bucks, nothing crazy. And then season two of Stranger Things came out and they made Steve like one of the best characters, a fan favorite. And his price shot up to like $80. I think when the rest of the Evangelion series comes out and Evangelion fans get wise to it, they're going to want to snatch all those up and they're going to realize, oh, I'm missing Asuka in her schoolgirl uniform. And I think it's going to make that pop go up in price. Even though now there might be a lot of them. It may stay on the website for a while. It may stay in stores for a while. It may stay in stores for a while. But eventually when that other line comes out, Ava fans are going to need her for their set. So the morning of the actual release day of the exclusives in stores, the Funko Shop online was going live at 7 a.m. And I really didn't have a problem getting all those ones. I was able to grab the Comic-Con mascot toucan, Hoppy the Hopperoo, Baby Puss. Watch your profanity. Lazy Luke. I love the look of that Lazy Luke. And I wasn't going to get him, but I also picked up the Batman holding the STCC bag. Because when you think about it, it does kind of look like it's some nerd at the con dressed up like Batman with their STCC bag. So the more I thought about it, the more it kind of made sense as an exclusive. And I do like that they use the original Batman pop head on there. Because the very first pop was Batman. Well, it was one of the first ones because a handful of them got released together at Comic-Con. So I kind of like that they did that. So I ended up picking that one up as well. All right, so that was it for online shopping. And I was happy to get everything from all the stores that are at the mall because I really didn't have time to go to the mall today because I had to work. So I took an early lunch and headed over to GameStop at around 9.30. I saw that there was two people waiting in line. They looked like a couple. So I just chilled in my car for a bit till around 9.45, I saw a third person waltz up. So that's when I got out because I really wasn't sure how many of each pop they were gonna get. So I got up, lined up, start talking to these people. It was actually kind of funny. The people that were first in line were on their honeymoon. They weren't even locals, but it just cracked me up. I was like, man, you guys were meant to be. If you guys are pop hunting on your honeymoon, I mean, <laughs> she's a keeper, dude. But they pointed out that GameStop had posted how many of each pop they got. And at this GameStop, which is one that I go to in a smaller town where there's no other kind of like pop stores around. So the hunters on SDCC or any of the other con days don't go to this one just because there's no Hot Topic. There's no Box Lunch. There's no Barnes & Noble. So they go to an area where they can like hit all the stores at once. And this was like my little secret over here. But this time I was fourth in line. And there was only four Kang and Kodos. Luckily, I saw that they were going to limit to one person each. So I felt like I was safe with that. They also only got like one Conan, two of the Batmans, which surprised me. I believe they had something like 10 Johnny Ricos, six Gluties, around six of the McCrees, and about six of the Minervas as well. So we're chilling there. And then a fifth guy with his girlfriend shows up. He starts talking about how he needs that Kang and Kodos. And everyone just kind of doesn't say anything. And he starts talking about how, well, he called ahead for them to hold it. And I start thinking like, fuck that, you know. But luckily on the sign, it did say first come, first serve. So I really didn't think that they were going to honor call aheads to hold the SDCC pops. So I still felt like I was safe. But yeah, when we were still standing there, the, the couple in front that were on their honeymoon, the guy, like, I was talking to him earlier. I guess he's only been collecting for a few months. Um, and he starts bragging that he was able to get seven of the red chrome Vegetas, right? And I can already tell, like, the guy that got there um, fifth in line, like, like his eye starts twitching a little bit. You know, he starts getting this crazy look in his eye, like, oh, fuck, this guy's a fucking flipper, you know? And I sense that these guys, you know, they were kind of new to the pop hunting, like, culture. And I felt like they thought um, what it's all about is to buy extras to sell to fund your own habit, I guess, pretty much, right? So he wasn't, like, maliciously bragging about, like, yeah, I bought a bunch of them to sell. But it started to become apparent to the guy fifth in line that 
I think this guy and his girlfriend are both going to buy a Kang and Kodos. And I'm pretty sure these other two dudes are going to buy one too. And I can like sense the stress level just going up. I mean, you could just, you could feel it. So they finally open, we get a line. Of course, the dude and the girlfriend each get a Kang and Kodos. And I want to say they got a Johnny Rico. They didn't get a Batman, which surprised me. And then the third guy got a Kang and Kodos and a Batman, and he got the only Conan. So when it was my turn, I said, let me get that Johnny Rico, and he looks awesome. They didn't just splatter it with orange paint. There's like chunks. Looks really good. I like how they added the scene that it's from on the back. I wish they would do that more often. A little blurb would have been cool too. But yeah, this one is really, really cool. Painted really well. Looks better in person than it does in pictures. Then I told the guy, let me get that Glutey as well. Because, I mean, <laughs> he looks to be like a chubby personal trainer or fitness instructor named Glutey. That's funny to me. Um, didn't want to sleep on this one in case, like, this guy is just hilarious in the show. And then um, he becomes 40 bucks down the line and I really want him. Because at 40 bucks, I wouldn't pay for it. But, you know, 15 I would. So yeah, picked up Glutey as well. And I wasn't gonna get him, but when I saw him there, sitting on the shelf in this really awesome box. I mean, the black is like flat. The picture of the pop is like in a glossy and it's got gold stamping. It's really a nice looking box. And the contrast between the black and the teal is really nice. I mean, this teal is a really pretty color. So, <laughs> I wasn't going to get it. But yeah, I told the guy, you know, let me have that Batman too because I'm a goddamn sucker. Excuse me. Yeah, so when I got the last Batman, right, because there was only two, I start hearing homeboy behind me <laughs> sighing really hard, right? He starts he's starting to get real pissed. Um, he, He's... Talking to his girlfriend already, going like, I can't believe they only got two Batmans, what the fuck? So, um, I can sense this dude just getting pissed. And, uh, the first couple, they were still kind of sticking around because they were still kind of talking to me. We ended up exchanging numbers, it was really weird. Um, but since they were on their honeymoon, um, in my town pretty much, they wanted to, uh, connect about some cool stuff to do before they had to leave. Um, kind of weird, um, but, Yeah. Was able to get this one, um, got lucky to get it, that those first people didn't want one of these as well. My teeth are sharp like a gray white shark. Let me taste that flesh is my favorite part. So when Homeboy heard me ask for this one, that's when he starts going, man, that's bullshit. That couple over there got two. They don't even care about you know, collecting them. Obviously, they're, they're here for the valley. He starts yelling at them. He starts yelling at um, this poor cashier that's just trying to do his job, right? And he's like, look, man, she's a customer too. Like, if you are if you and your girlfriend were here first, you know, I would have sold you two too. Like, you know, I'm sorry, but this guy, is he's starting to get heated, right? He's starting to talk about, he called ahead, which I think is bullshit. I'm like, dude, that's not, a, I mean, you called ahead. If somebody else would have called ahead and you were in line, you would have been even probably even more pissed if they go, oh, I'm sorry, somebody called ahead, right? But um, I, I really thought this this guy was going to um, follow this other dude out and like pop him in the in the parking lot. So I kind of told the guy, I was like, yeah, you know, you probably should you know, get the fuck out of here, dude. But um, yeah, was very, very lucky again to get this one. It was the last one. And to be honest, this is another one that looks way better in person. The drool is in like a translucent green, which is really nice. Um, I think Kodos looks way cooler with the ray gun and the teeth than Kang. But yeah, they both look pretty awesome together. Um, they're super heavy. This has got to be the heaviest two-pack. I mean, it feels so solid. The box is in okay shape. It's got a little bit of a crease there on that tab. Nothing major. Um especially for being the last one. Even if it was um, more damaged, I would have got it just because this is 
one of the number one pops I wanted. I mean, here's another look at that ray gun. Super, super cool. And I love the pops with the domes. Um, definitely the pops of the con, maybe. Um, you know, besides like the blue otter or like, um, I don't know, some of the rare ones or, or some of the to Tokyo ones, like, yeah, of course, those are great, right? And those are going to probably be more expensive in the long run than these ones. But these are like the accessible ones. Of the accessible ones, I think these are the coolest ones. And yeah, looking forward to collecting the rest of the Treehouse of Horror. They're not on the back, unfortunately. But um, yeah, I would have hated to collect the Treehouse of Horror ones without having Kang and Kodos. All right, Funkholes, so that was my SDCC hunt day experience. For the most part, the website treated me nice, and I only had to go to GameStop, which I didn't mind because it was actually kind of funny to see somebody rage out, especially when you look at it from, like, somebody that's not a pop collector's perspective. Like, I told that story to my friend, and my friend was like, wait, wait, like, over, like, over a toy? I'm like, yeah, yeah, over a toy. And it's, you know, it's pretty funny. Well, because it didn't happen to me. If I was, like, the one that missed out, I would have been pretty pissed, too. Probably wouldn't have said anything. I just would have been, like, annoyed, right? But, yeah, got everything I wanted. Only thing left is maybe trying to get those Toy Tokyo ones, but I'm not going to try too hard because they're so random, right? And who has the time to sit there for weeks checking and checking and checking and checking? I ain't trying to do all that. If I get lucky, that'll be great, but I ain't going to be too broken up over it. What I want more is that Blue Otter, though. Hopefully... Nobody buys them right now because I think people are trying to sell them for like 300 to 400 bucks right now. Hopefully nobody feels that and the price eventually goes down. I remember the Sour Patch Kid, the green Sour Patch Kid that was also limited to 1000 At first was selling for like three to $400. But a couple of weeks before the con, I did notice that there were some sales for like 120 130 which isn't too crazy for a 1000 piece exclusive. If I see the Blue Otter drop to around that price, which I've never paid for a pop that much in my life, but I really want the Otter Pops, and I'll definitely try to sell some of my older pops that maybe now I kind of regret buying or I impulse bought at the time, that I would definitely trade out to get that Otter Pop, even though it might cost me a little bit too much. We'll see. All right, let me know in the comments below what your SDCC Hunt Day experience was. If your GameStops were as limited as mine, what your online experience was, or anything else you'd like to say. Thanks for watching and have a good one.